So here we are debuting our season against the Utah Jazz who have no additions Mike Conley and Bojan Bogdanovic on the roster while we of course have Chris Paul, Shea Gilders, Alexander and Danilo Gallinari all new faces in the starting lineup and well without further ado let's get straight into it all right and well first play here Donovan Mitchell trying to shoot this over Shea Gilders Alexander and thankfully he misses but on the break Chris Paul gonna throw it down to Gilders Alexander for his first bucket as the member of the Oklahoma City Thunder of course he was a very prolific rookie with the Los Angeles Clippers and now we bring him over to this team where we hope that he can have a big impact which he already has in this game a quick four points and now Donovan Mitchell going to the basket on Gilders Alexander. Look at the swat sh swatted shot away by Shea. And now here comes an off-ball screen. A really weird play going on here. Where honestly, I'm just not accustomed to the whole playbook that Billy Donovan is running just yet. And of course, yes, it's not David Fizzle anymore. Like in that next series, we do have Billy Donovan running the show from... Well, I can't say here on out because he could get fired at any point in time. Because this guy's been around for a while and the team's been pretty mediocre. But... In this game, well, his playbook was all right, so that's cool. And there goes Terrence Ferguson knocking down the three green light shot off of the good setup off the screen. And here comes Ferguson once again with the steal down the break, slamming it down. So there he goes showing his athleticism off, which honestly, I don't even think I mentioned in this la the last episode how athletic that guy is. But Danilo off to a rough start as he misses his first shot. And then here comes Joe Ingles, which I don't know how the hell he hit that. But anyways, back on the other end, Shade Gilders Alexander working as the floor general in this instance. And well, Chris Paul comes off the screen, benefiting from playing off the ball and forcing Utah to take a timeout. And we're back on our offensive end. Danilo, beautiful step back, and uh, he just doesn't get to go. All right, but Danilo Gallinari, you know, had a little bit of a rough start to this one. Right here, he kind of just gets completely boxed out by Ed Davis. Now, do I expect him to box out Ed Davis? No, but he is the four, you know, and Jesus, what a pass by Emmanuel Moody. I don't think I've ever seen him throw a pass like that before. Danilo, once again, open mid-range shot. That's off. He did already have the cold symbol, but... um. Come on, my guy. All right, there we go. Good steal. That time, actually, by Andre Roberson. I don't know why he looked like Danilo for a second. But here comes Darius Baisley, our rookie, coming down and dunking it down on the other end. So we're only down by one point at this point in the game. 24 seconds left in the first quarter. All right, there you go, Danilo. Good layup there by him. Um, What is he doing? Come on. He's just calling. Okay, there he goes. He, he was just standing in the backcourt calling for the ball. I have no clue why he was doing that. But anyways, for some reason, Coach called an iso play for Darius Baisley. And he goes just as you would expect it to. But my God, Danilo Gallinari pulling up for three off the catch. And then Dante Exum. Now, Dante, doesn't he just remind you of one of those guys that would be out of the league by now? I don't know. He has some value still as like a defender and stuff. But that's completely off the topic. I mean, not really because he's in the game. But... Yeah, I'm completely rambling. Shout out to Danilo for missing another easy shot. And here comes Dennis Schroeder, also known as value or no value Chris Paul. Yeah, actually, no. I had it right the first time. Nerlens Noel, good putback shot. I already said how much value he has in the last episode. There goes Donovan Mitchell missing the three-point shot on the break. Andre Roberson. And uh, I don't know why I said his name with, like, some vengeance there or whatever the right word there would be because, uh, well, we already know Andre Robeson was going to do anything. But Chris Paul, he's going to do something. And, well, here he goes starting to go off here. And Steven Adams is going to throw it back out to Chris Paul. And uh, as I said, he was starting to go off. Well, um, this is where the whole spacing thing gets to us, right? Andre Robeson just kind of running into him and forces him to take a really bad shot. And Utah, got, Utah gets the rebound. Bogdan, Bog wait, no, that's the other... That's Bojan Bogdanovic. I don't know why I get... The, actually, I do know why I always get the confused. They have the same name. Okay. We're down by four points, all right? 314 left to go in the quarter. Chris Paul, beautiful setup off the screen. Now, I like when Shea also directs the offense with the ball in his hands because it gives Chris Paul a lot of great off-ball opportunities. And, well, here comes Shea back on the fast break off the Chris Paul steal. Actually, no, it was his steal. And he lays it up and in. 34-33 here with 2.37 left to go in the quarter. And Donovan Mitchell, one hell of a finish right there. Chris Paul getting open off the screen. Pull up mid-range shot. Ah, uh, he misses that. But there goes Nerlens Noel once again proving his value. And Chris Paul, oh, here we go. In stride, green light jump shot from a little bit behind the arc. And we're up by three points with 118 go to in the quarter. Shea Gilders Alexander here trying to create something in the corner. And back out to Chris Paul. Paul trying to create something now and well he's just kind of gonna run into Gilgis Alexander throw back to him back to Chris Paul and uh don't really know what's going on here but oh my god Chris Paul <laughs> that's a very Chris Paul move you know D Wade Chris Paul veteran type of move and he gets that to go he has his takeover now and taking advantage of it of Mike Conley and the Utah defense which you don't really hear of often but we go into the half 
with Chris Paul having 16 points and we're up by four at the halftime break. So that's a very solid way to start off this game. Now, CP3 does miss his first shot of the second half, but Steven Adams able to bring in the rebound because Rudy Gobert kind of stepped out a little bit too far to contest it. And look at CP3 on the defensive end. He's still got it. And that's really a case if he's still got it. I haven't seen him dunk like that or jump like that in years. And there goes Mike Conley. Now, he's still having a pretty solid debut for his Utah team, his new Utah team. And there goes Danilo Gallinari in the post looking like Julius Randle with the drop step. And, well, Gallinari once again open for three, and that's good. So, Danilo ends up turning the tide here, becoming a pretty solid player in this game. And, well, here goes Ed Davis. Now, Ed Davis, I actually don't think I've highlighted anything he's done so far, but he was practically the best player for the Jazz in this game just because of rebounds and putting backup shots after getting the offensive rebound. And Dennis Schroeder misses this shot. And once again, rebound by Ed Davis on the break for Utah. Emmanuel Moutier ripped away. Now, this guy right here, I did not expect to play him, but Hamadel, oh, I already said I wouldn't say his first name again, and I don't know if I'm saying it right still, but here he goes again. Diallo with the steal and another bucket here after dunking it down on the last play. So back-to-back -back steals and back-to-back -back buckets from Diallo. That's pretty impressive. Now, the guy really isn't supposed to be good at anything according to his stats, but if he's going to be athletic, good at defense and all that, I mean, then again, in 2K, do you really need to be good at defense? And you can just be athletic and be good at defense is what I'm trying to say. D uh, Diallo with the ball once again here. Probably shouldn't be isoing with him, but eventually Gallinari's man sags off enough to the point where he could just pull up that three. And here goes Gallinari in the post once again, pulling up with the fadeaway shot. So Gallinari really turned things around here, 17 points for him. He's still not obviously shooting the best because, you know, he shot really bad to start off. Steven Adams able to shut down both the Gobert's attempts there. And look at Diallo once again filling the lane very nicely. And he's going to go to the line to hit both free throws, which honestly, it's a pretty rare type of thing probably for him because he's not the greatest free throw shooter. But anyways, back on the break, Diallo once again going to the basket, going to get fouled again. So just like that, Diallo with a really solid impact in this game. Might need to look at him some more and see if we should probably put him in the rotation going forward. But yeah, the Jazz are still a pretty good team. Now, Gilgis Alexander does hit the shot here to give us a five-point lead going into the fourth quarter. But then again, the Jazz are still hanging in there. Now, this is where the spacing starts to kill us, all right? Just look at this, right? Got an open guy here. Oh, wait, it's Nolan's Noel. He's going to try to drive to the basket, eventually going to go up and just kind of get ripped by Bogdan or no other, or other. Oh, my God, I'm going to keep calling him the wrong one. Whatever. Ed Davis, good put back by him. Don't really know why I'm complimenting him. Well, I do because he's playing really, really well in this game for some reason. And now, what a beautiful move by Shea, but he can't convert. And uh, they're going to go back on the break. Bojan, I got it right that time, hits the three. So we're down by one point with six minutes left to go into this game. And Chris Paul, beautiful step back, but he can't convert. And good rebound by Steven Adams putting it back up and in. Now, I didn't actually expect to play Nerlens at all at the four with Steven Adams, but it actually worked out pretty well in this game. Spacing aside, I mean, getting offensive rebounds, it worked out really well. Chris Paul, good pull-up jump shot there. And then Danilo Gallinari with a post hook. He's pulling out the whole repertoire in this game. And there goes Donovan Mitchell open for three but pretty solid late contest from Shea Gil Gilgis Alexander off of the screen and then Terrence Ferguson pretty, pretty quiet in this game aside from that one three at the beginning but he does get fouled there and would go to the line and hit both free throws we're starting to pull away this game as they miss another shot another good contest from Shea and then the bucket from Shea on the other end gives us a seven point lead with a few minutes left to go here 237 left to go to be exact and almost threw away the ball here but look at the room they give to Shea Gilgis Alexander and he knocks down the three that man is so much fun to use in these games just because he can do practically everything on the basketball court. Chris Paul going to go to the basket here and finish a tough layup over Joe Ingles and Mike Conley. And that's going to do it. We end up winning the first game of the season by 10 points. A very solid victory against a very solid Utah Jazz team, a defensive-minded team. We were able to get some solid buckets on. By the way, this game was on 10-minute quarters, Hall of Fame difficulty. The score was a little bit lower because it's two pretty solid defensive and less solid offensive teams. But anyways, stay tuned for our next game, which will be against our former franchise player, Russell Westbrook and the Houston Rockets. And I'm out. Cut.